Let's take a look at how MapReduce actually works by running a MapReduce program and looking at the output. So as you remember from previous lessons, MapReduce essentially you create two programs. One is a mapper, the other is a reducer. And you give those programs to Hadoop, which then will distribute them among all the nodes and run the mappers against all the files that feed into your process. And the reducer will take the output of each of those maps and put it back into some output that you can actually use. So what we're going to do is run a MapReduce program that will summarize the word count in a bunch of books. And those books we looked at in a previous lesson are these. So we have Beowulf and Great Expectations and Fairy Tales and so on. So the input files that we have are a bunch of unstructured data. You don't get more unstructured than this a lot of words in here. And we're going to do something very simple just to summarize how many times the word squashing occurs between all of the books. So we're going to combine them all together and analyze them. So fairly straightforward. Let's see how we do that. So here is a list of commands that will do the entire process. We'll just take them one by one. So here we're going to use DFS to put the data into HDFS. That's actually what the second command does. And we, we did that in the previous lesson. And the next command is going to remove our output file. So we're going to summarize all of these text files, and we're going to dump that into a folder called Words by Book. So this command just cleans out that folder so that there's nothing in it when we start. Here's the program that really kicks off MapReduce. So this is some, you know, we have some, uh, some cleanup to do beforehand. Then the MapReduce is going to really analyze the files. And our mapper program is this, this book text mapper, and our reducer is book text reducer. Let's take a quick look at those and see what those look like. So here's book text mapper. All this is going to do is it does ask the environment what file am I working on because it needs to know that. And then for every line in the file it's been given to work on, it's going to just strip out spaces at the end, split the line into a list of words, and then for every word in that list, it's going to print a line. Here's the file name that I'm working on. Here's the word that I just saw. And then it's just hard-coded as one. The mapper doesn't try to summarize how many times the word occurs. It just creates the detail leaf data that then the reducer will summarize. So that's the mapper. And we can test that mapper to see how it works. Let me just open a command prompt here. And I'm going to go into my... Hadoop, I have some code samples. If I go into MapReduce, I actually have a script called testmapper.sh, and that's going to take one of this book I have in my local folder, put it into the screen, and then run the mapper test on it, which is basically the same script we looked at, and then see what it does. And this will help just so you understand what the mapper is producing. So the mapper is producing one line that has the file name, the word it saw, and one. But these are detailed files, so you'll have to kind of look that they won't summarize the data. So in here, the word the was detected, and that number one was kicked out. But before that, the was detected against up here too. So the could appear many, many times within this file, and every time being counted as one. It's the reducer's job to add up all the ones. So let's look at that reducer program. So if I open the reducer and take a peek at it, the reducer is a little more complicated because it has more work to do. What the reducer is going to do is take the output from the mapper programs, split that by that pipe character that we used to delimit within the uh, file name and word. And so it'll get three arguments. One will be the file name, then the word, then the number. And there's just a loop in here. So it will loop through, and as it's given its data, which will be sorted, it will detect whenever the word and file changes and kick out a summary line for that. So here's the, the current count. So at the end of the reducing process, all those the with one will turn into the with how many times that occurred. And then the, that will get aggregated among all the books that got summarized by all the nodes and then were combined. So that's what that is going to do. Essentially it's going to transfer the code. This is going to move the code to the data and Hadoop's going to do that. And then when that's all done, the output is going to go into this folder called User Hive Warehouse Words by Book, 
We're putting it in Hive because in a subsequent demo from this one, we're actually going to turn that into a Hive table. But in this case, it doesn't matter. It just is a file that we're going to put into an output folder. And then down here, I'm actually just a little bit of demo, just copying back that Words by Book file so we can look at the output of the reducer. So let's go ahead and run that. And it's going to do all these steps, and they'll kind of fly by, but so pay attention. Oops, not test. So it's going to be run full shell. So that's going to delete the files. As you can see, it deleted them. And then it will actually copy them all back into the folder again. And now the MapReduce job is running. And what you can see going on here is it says running job. And to the console, it will actually start telling you how much of the mapping is done, how much of the reducing is done. So this is a batch that's running. Another way to monitor that batch is from a web view. So if I come into this folder and refresh this, I can see in my running jobs, I have this streaming job running. That's the one I just submitted. If I click on that, I can actually see the progress of that job. So it has 28 total maps. Two of them have completed. Reduces just one. One reduced job. None of that's been done yet. And as the job runs, I can actually see this will change and it will progress. So I don't have to be on the console to see the progress of this job. I can, I can do it from this web view. From the console, it looks like that. So remember, every file is being passed through a mapper, and then the reducer, as soon as two files are available, the reducer can start reducing. And then as more come through, it can continue. Again, web view, terminal view. So I'll stay in the terminal. So we can see this finishes up, and the map will get to 100% before the reduce. But then once the reduce is 100%, then the job is done, and we can look at the output. Okay, so to the console, we've been logged a lot of information. So the reduce finished tells us it completed successfully. And then we get various statistics, like how many bytes were read, how many were written, and so on. And the meat of it is, this is the output of that. So user, hive, warehouse, words by book. If I go back to the system, I can look at where that was written. Warehouse, words by book. And since the output is relatively small, it's only 24 megabytes, it didn't exceed the block size. So we really just got the one part, one file, and that's fine. If this is a very large job, we might have multiple files here that together make up the entire table, if you will, of words by book. But this one just has one. And if we look at that, now we can see that Arthur, with an exclamation point, occurred 10 times over the course of all of those books. And then as I scroll through, I can see how many times various other words appeared. I can also see opportunities to improve my script. My script isn't getting rid of these punctuation marks, so I'm actually getting nothing question mark and nothing period as being different. And subsequently, we'll, we'll fix that later, but for now you can get the idea. So later on, we'll actually take this and push this back into SQL Server. We'll make Hive tables with it and do some various different things. But that's effectively a basic intro to using MapReduce and creating MapReduce programs.